Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, as requested on the YouTube channel, um, I'm going to do um, a question on flow or really a section that comes under area and volume on the Leave Insert Ordinary Level course. Um, it was question five. And the first part looked at area and perimeter of circles. And then the second question was about a cone and working out water flow. Um, so I've just copied the question over here so we can work away on it. Um, let's do part A first. So the crescent shown in the shaded part of the diagram was created by removing a disc of radius 2.5 centimeters from a disc of radius 3 centimeters. Find the area and the perimeter of the crescent. Give each answer correct to two decimal places. So a crescent, you often hear of a moon being described as a crescent. It's, it's this gray area here. And it's formed by um, removing this disc here from the, the larger circle. Okay, so the radius of the smaller disc is 2.5. The radius then of the larger disc is, is 3 centimeters. Okay, um, why the radius? Well, if we're talking about area and perimeter of a circle um, on your log tables, the first few pages of your log tables deal with uh, length and area and surface area and volume. So this is page 8, 9, 10, 11. So they, they don't do a square rectangle, they assume you do them, so they do on, on page 8, parallelogram, trapezium, and here is your circle. And you can see there's two formulas, there's one for what they call L, and um, we would know L as the circumference of a circle, or basically the perimeter or the length of the outside of the circle. So to get the circumference of a circle, it's 2 pi or or being the radius. And then your area is pi r squared. So they are the two formulas that we are going to use for this question. Okay, and all, all given in your log tables, you don't have to learn them off by heart. Okay, you just have to know where they are in your log table. So page eight. So it doesn't matter which one we do first. Let's do the area first. So area of a circle, um, of any circle is pi r squared. Okay, and in general, that pi here, um, we would leave as pi in your calculator. So if, if you look at your calculator, uh, down the very bottom, you'll see a by 10x button. Hit, hidden behind that is a pi symbol, um, and it's in gold, so you'll have to go shift by 10x to get a pi. And you can see when you do that and you hit equals, um, you'll get 3.5. 14159 So it's better to use that version of pi because there's no rounding rather than shortening it to 3.14 or something like that. Okay, so how are we going to get the area of that crescent? Well, I would say you get the area of the big circle first, then you get the area of the small circle and you subtract one from the other. Okay, so area of large circle would be pi r squared. Okay, all areas equal to pi r squared. So it's equal to pi by r, which is three squared. And if you put that into your calculator, you are going to get um, nine pi. And that's what we call left in terms of pi. It, it's where you haven't multiplied the pi into your answer. So basically that means three times 3.14159265 which is the value for pi so you can see when i multiply it in i'm going to get something like 27 or 28 and a load of decimal places it's often left in terms of pi because there's no rounding in it if we do that but if you multiply it in if, if you're uncomfortable in terms of pi this question doesn't um, specify so you can multiply it in and you'll get 28.2743 and of course it's centimeters squared because it's area okay area of the smaller circle is pi times 2.5 squared so 2.5 squared by that pi again is 19.63495 centimeters squared and subtract one from the other 
And you can see I tend to leave lots of decimal places while I'm working out a sum. Um, and then I round only at the bottom, at the very end. And this is to avoid what we call rounding error. Um, it's when you start rounding numbers that are already rounded. And you end up with a bigger error. So I am getting 8.63935 centimetres squared. And I'm coming up to see what they wanted. Two decimal places. So I'm getting 8.6. That 9 is going to round that 4 before, or that 3 before it to a 4. So the area, 8.64 centimetres squared. So that's the area of that crescent. Okay, and that crescent was got by cutting out the smaller one from the bigger one. And that's why we subtract it. Okay, uh, it also wants the perimeter then. Let me switch to, to purple for the perimeter. So the perimeter is L in the log tables. Um, also called the circumference of a circle. Okay, so the perimeter. So if I'm going to walk around that, that crescent, I'm going to walk around here. I often say walk the walk when you're doing your um, perimeters. So there's one side of it and then there's the inside. Okay, or you could walk this way and then double back on yourself. So basically it's all around the edge of those circles. Do it once more. Okay, so if you do that, even if you do that freehand with your finger, you'll see it's actually the circumference of the big one plus the circumference of the small one. Because these two circles only ever touch in one point, right here. Okay, so that's the small one. That's the circumference of that. And then I go around the outside one for the circumference of the big one. Okay, so if we get the the big one, the big circle, it's 2 pi by 3. So I'm getting 6 pi. And I'm just going to leave it in terms of pi for this particular one. No reason at all. I'm just, I suppose, um, giving you the option of practicing uh, leaving things in terms of pi. And I got 5 pi for that one. So therefore, the perimeter is 6 pi plus 5 pi, which is 11 pi. Okay, And it would just be centimetres in this case because it's just the length. So it's not an area, so it's just centimetres, it's not centimetres cubed. Now, to leave it as 11 pi would be incorrect because the question says two decimal places. So at some stage, you do have to... Multiply in the pi, multiply in the 3.14. And roughly, if you go 11 times 3, so you're 33, 34 is the answer you'd expect when you multiply it in. When I multiply that in, I get 34.5575 centimetres. So to two decimal places, 34.5. That 7 there rounds the number before it up. So 34. 0.56 centimetres is the perimeter of that crescent. So that was part A, which I believe was worth 10 marks. And now let's go on to part B. So quite a different question, not related to part A. An empty inverted cone of vertical height 12 centimetres and radius 7 centimetres is filled with water from a pipe. The water flows from the pipe at a steady rate of 0.5 litres per minute. Find the time it takes to fill the cone. Give your answer correct to the nearest second. Okay, so quite a bit to this question. The first thing though is, um, it's, it's, it's a shape, it's, it's an area and volume question, it's a cone, okay? So go to your log tables, um, there's length and area and then on to surface area and volume and you can see here appears the cone cone cylinder sphere three very common uh, questions uh, that come up in the area and volumes so cone again two formulas area is pi or l volume a third pi r squared h okay now up here it explains A represents the curved surface area. So if you get a question about curved surface area, you're going after the A formula. If you get a question about volume, 
then you're going after the V formula. Okay, so let's come back to ours. If this um, inverted cone, which just means it's upside down, is filled with water from a pipe, then it is holding a volume of water. Okay, so at some stage, we will more than likely pi r squared h, let me just check that, a third pi r squared h is the volume of a cone. Okay, so definitely get that formula down um, and, and work out your volume. There's two types of, of heights, I suppose, th um, that um, apply to a cone. One is what we call the slant height, that's what what's called L in your log tables. And then there's the perpendicular height, which is H, which is from the center right up to the top. So perpendicular height H is what we use in volume. Slant height is what we use in surface area, because I suppose you're talking about the area of the outside of the cone. Okay, so a third pi or squared H. And you can see in our ones, we are, we are, we've been given the perpendicular height H and our radius is seven. Okay, so find the time it takes to fill the cone. So we're filling this cone with water. So let's figure out my volume. Um, and because everything is in centimeters, I'm going to get my unit in centimeters cubed. Cubed because it's now a 3D shape. So let's put that into the calculator as third multiplied by pi multiplied by seven squared multiplied by 12. And I am getting 196 pi. And if I multiply that in, 615.752 centimeters cubed is the volume of my cone. Okay, um, so we have filled up the cone with water and we have a volume. Now, the question said the water flows from a pipe at a rate of 0.5 litres per minute. Find the time it takes to fill the cone. What makes this type of question difficult is the fact that my volume is in centimetres cubed, but the flow rate is in litres. So you need a conversion factor to convert from um, centimetres cubed to litres. So there's two very important conversions that you need to know. One of them is that a thousand centimetres cubed is the same as one litre. This isn't written anywhere. You have to know this. Okay, so it's, I mean, it's not in the log tables. Or one metre cubed is a thousand litres. Okay, uh, this is the one that applies to this question because our volume is in centimetres cubed. So a thousand centimetres cubed is one litre. Therefore, if you divide that by a thousand, you will get it in litres. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take 615 from 752 to divide by a thousand. Um, and you can see once you know this conversion factor, this thousand centimetres cubed, you can see that you don't have a full litre here. Okay, so you should get a part of a litre. So divide that by a thousand and you'll get 0 0.615752 litres. Okay, so that's how much water is in that cone. Okay, now the water flows from the pipe at a steady rate of 0 0.5 litres per minute. So for every minute, it'll fill by 0 0.5. Now I have 0 0.6 or thereabouts here, so you can see it's gonna take a little bit more than a minute to fill that cone. So to find out exactly how much it takes, we'll go 0 0.615752 and we'll divide it by that 0 0.5 liters, okay? So I'm dividing liters by liters here. So 0 0.615752 divided by 0 0.5 and I'm getting 1.231504 okay so what units is that now well it's liters per minute okay so that's minutes okay so follow your question down to make sure your units were right 
You can see here I checked that it was centimeters and centimeters, which is how I knew it was centimeters cubed. Okay, and then in this one, I know it has to be minutes because I divided it by 0 0.5 and that 0 0.5 is liters per minute. So my answer is in minutes. Okay, now find the time it takes to fill the cone. That's the time. However, give your answer correct to the nearest second. So I need to convert that by sec. I need to convert that to seconds and there's 60 seconds in one minute. So therefore, I have to multiply my minutes by 60 to convert it to seconds. And I am getting 73.89024 for that. And it says to the nearest second. So that 89 is going to round up. So it's going to be 74 seconds. So it's going to take 74 seconds to fill that cone at a rate of 0.5 uh, litres per minute. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level 7 in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.